Hey, this is Wojo, and today we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay uh, and look at some word problems that kind of go along with this. So if you remember kind of the most basic uh, exponential growth or exponential function, it uh, looks something like this. Y equals, uh, and sometimes there's not a Y equals, sometimes it's money equals or something, uh, A times B to the X, where that number, that first number, is your initial amount, how much you start with. Uh, the number in front of the exponent, the base of the exponent, is going to be what we call the growth or decay factor. It goes by many names, but we're going to use... Uh, that today to kind of talk about it and then whatever power we raise to that's often the time that's elapsed um, But sometimes it can be different things uh, So one of the things I want to kind of just look at uh, is this idea of If you have exponential growth or decay, what do you know just by looking at the equation? So when we understand that it makes the word problems a lot easier So if I said y equals 2,000 times 1.12 to the x remember that number in front that number in front is the initial amount. And so when we look at this, the initial amount here would be like it starts with $2,000. The number in front of the X is your growth factor. And so this is what we want to talk about. Uh, growth or decay. Are we going up or are we going down? And so the easiest way to kind of look at this is normally you would want to say that you start at uh, 100%. 100% uh, would be you're, you're not growing, you're not decaying, you're just who you are. You're just your original amount. If you're above 100%, then you grew. If you're under 100%, then you decayed. And so when you look at a function like this, this 1.12, uh, the 1 is like 100%. The 1, 2 would be like 112% if you want to look at it. So if you're at 112%, 1.12, would be like 112%. Well, how much above 100 are you? Well, you're 12% above 100. So 1.12 would be a 12% growth. And so every time you're above the 100, you're above the 0.12 or above the 1.00, whatever you're above it, that's your growth. So 1.12 would be a 12% growth factor. And again, because it's above 1, that's how we know it's growing. Um, if we look at something like this, though, again, starting amount's 500, You'll notice this one, 0 0.82, 0 0.82 is below 100. And so if you want to kind of think of it this way, if, you're at, if you start at 100%, how much would you have to take away from the 100% to end up at the 82%? So how much below 100 is 82? Well, how much would you have to take away from 100 to get to 82? You'd have to take away 18%. So when you see 0 0.82, because it's below 100, we know that that is a decay. How much below 100 is it? It's 18% below 100, so it's an 18% decay. And when you're looking at functions like that, that's what you want to look at. So let's just kind of talk about a couple of these then. If you look at this one, 0.75, just imagine that's like you're at 75%. Well. If you're not at 75, or if you're at 75 percent, you're you're less than 100. How much less than 100 are you at 75? You're 25 percent below 100. So this would be a 25 percent decay. This one, you're at 135 percent. 1.35 as a as a percentage is 135. 135 percent means you're 35 percent above 100 or a 35% growth. So this would be a growth of 35%. These tend to be the harder ones here, the ones with the 0.08. I'll have students that say, well, that's an 8% decay. Well, then that's not true. 8% is what you have left. If you started at 100, how much would you have to lose to end up at 8%? Well, 100 minus 8, that's 92%. You had a 92% decay. And so this is a decay, but it's a decay of 92%. Sometimes you'll see numbers like this inside, where there's not a one point something, it's just a two. Well, the growth factor means you're timesing by two, so you're doubling it. So a two is like a doubling. Um, if you see a three, that's tripling. And so you can have percentage increases like this, 35% increase, or you could just say you double or triple and, and do things like that. <clears throat> so that's kind of the most basics kind of review of what we've talked about so far. And then there's just a matter of kind of taking those and, and turning them into word problems. So these are some word problems I, 
found online. These aren't mine. These are just ones that I found online and I printed them off. And I just kind of want to use this idea of um, y equals a times b to the x and how we can solve those in kind of all these cases. So it says find a bank account balance if the account starts with 100. Remember the starting amount is important. Starting amount is that a. So y equals 100, that's my starting amount, times, remember the growth factor is what goes in the parentheses. So did we grow or did we decay? If we're putting money in the bank, we're growing our money. We're growing at a rate of 4%. And so if we look at kind of 4%, 4% above 100 would be 104%. So we'd write it as 1.04. That's a 4% increase. And then this X becomes the time, and it says here how much after 12 years. So we'd raise it to the 12th. Uh, you can tell you would use this function. probably should talk about that. You can tell you use this function anytime you have constant uh, rate of growth of a, of a multiplication, of a percentage increase, a doubling, a tripling. Uh, every year you're going to get 4%. You're going to multiply by 4% over and over and over again. So whenever you see word problems in which you have a, an increase of a certain percentage or you're doubling or you're tripling, uh, this exponential function, that's what this is called, an exponential, these become uh, useful to kind of solve your problems. After that, it's just a matter of typing it in the calc. I'll type it in here, and uh, you could just double check with your calculator that you would get the same thing. Uh, but when you would type it in, you would just type in what you see. Uh, you type in 100 parentheses, 1.04. And then to raise it to the 12th power, again, just use the up arrow key. That's our power to the 12th. And so if you started with uh, $100, you left it alone for 12 years, the bank paid you 4% interest, four years later you'd have $160.10. So the bank pretty much just gave you $60 free dollars as long as you held it in there for 12 years. 12 years is a long time to wait for $60. Bucks. Um, but if this was, let's say, $10,000, well, now you're making $16,000. So now $6,000 is a lot more to make in 12 years. So the more money you start with, the kind of the more money you make. Um, but going back to what we had before, so we can get our answer in here, it'd be $160.10. All of these problems kind of follow the same outline. Uh, you either have growth or you have decay. Um, and so you just kind of got to be careful. So it says here, 1985, there are 285 cell phones in the small town. The number of subscribers increased, so that's good. We know it's going to go up by 75% uh, per year after 1985. How many cell phone subscribers were in Centerville in 1994? So again, Y equals our starting amount. We had 285 to start with. We're seeing an increase of 75%. So again, you got to think about how would you show an increase of 75%? Well, this number here would have to be 75% bigger than 1, or in this case, 1.75. So 1.00 would be 100%, but it's 75% above that, so it's 1.75. And then we just need to know how much time has gone by. Now, this one's a little different. It doesn't tell us how many years, but it says... We started in 1985 and we ended in 1994. So how many years went by? Well, from 85 to 95, that'd be 10 years. And it's one less than that because it only went to 94, so it's nine years. So you just raise it to the ninth. You would grab your calc and you would just plug in what you see. 285 one times 1.75, all raised to the ninth. And so they end up with a lot more. Oops, I typed it in wrong. 1.75 raised to the ninth. So a 75% increase is a lot, so we should see it jump up quite a bit. And so they went from 285 cell phone subscribers up to 43,000. Um, they're almost doubling it every year for 10 years, so it's going to go up quite a bit. So now they have 4, uh, 43,872. I'm going to round that 0.9 up because you can't have 0.98 of a person, so we'll just round it up to two. And so it's approximately that. <coughs> Uh, if you see problems that talk about doubling and tripling, same thing. Number three talks about doubling. If we start with only one bacteria, so we're starting with one, and we double it every hour, that's a two. And we did that uh, for a whole day, by the end of a day. Now this does get a little tricky, because some students would want to say, well, we put uh, to the one, because we want one day. But that rate... 
is doubling every hour. And so they kind of tell us our time in this one is based on hours. So at the end of one day, how many hours has gone by? It's not one hour. It would be 24 hours. So you would type it in like that. One times two to the fourth. I don't know why I said the fourth, because it's the 24th. 24 hours in a day. And so you, if you started at one bacteria, you let it double and double and double and double, it gets pretty big pretty fast. Because if you think about it, you start at one and you double it, you're at two. Times it by two, now you're at four. That's two hours gone by. We keep doing it three hours, four hours, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Every time I hit enter, it's another hour. Twelve hours, thirteen hours, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. You can see how big it gets if you let it go twenty-four hours. So instead of having to multiply it by hand all those times, you can just do the one times two to the fourth, two to the twenty-fourth, and you'll get that same answer. That whatever that is, that big number. What would that be? 16,777,216. Now those are all gross. They're all going up. Um, if you had something where it decayed, you would have to kind of subtract that. So like this one talks about halving. Uh, each one's halved. You start at 128. Their growth rate is half. There's two ways you could do it. You could say you lost half or lost 50%, so you'd have a 0 0.50, or you could just simply put a half in there, and you could do it that way. So if you want to look at that one, hopefully that makes sense. Um, number seven talks about uh, losing 12% of the air, starting at uh, 500 milliliters. If you talk about decreasing by 12%, this idea um, decay model. If you started at 100 and you subtracted 12%, you would be left with 88%. So the way you would write that is 0 0.88. Um, and this one it was per breath, and so to the 240th. And so that's exponential growth and exponential decay. Kind of just remember the big ideas that we talked about that <laughs> the first number is the starting number. The number in parentheses is usually that B term. That's that growth factor. And if it's above 100, it's above number 1, uh, it's a growth. If that number's smaller than 1, uh, it's a decay. And that's kind of the, the big ideas of exponential growth and decay. As always, if you have questions, come see me. Otherwise, good luck.